Welcome to Faith Rising, a podcast about living with bold faith in the modern age. On this episode, Daniel and Amber discuss their travels to the nations and seeking the Lord wherever your feet tread. We're talking about our travels around the world and being called to the nations. This is part two because we had so much that we wanted to share with you guys. And so um, I'm going to ask Daniel about the first time that he went to Brazil with his dad and we were about, he was about to propose to me, but he hadn't yet. What happened to you there? Yeah, so I remember the trip to Brazil. That was a really exciting trip for me because uh, I was getting ready to propose to Amber, as she shared with you, and uh, the Lord was really doing a lot of work in my life to prepare me, uh, not only for marriage and for covenant, but for the call that we had uh, to the nations and in other areas of our life. And that was the first big international trip, actually, that I'd been on. So Dad had me with the team there. And uh, I remember we suffered from a lot of stomach problems while we were there. And uh, one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to me in my life happened on that trip. Uh, We were there in the sanctuary and uh, one of the ministers was speaking and I kept having to run back and forth to the bathroom because of the (laughs) stomach trouble that we were having and uh, so have you ever seen those little uh, soaps that have a plastic hook on them and they hang inside of a toilet bowl? So I just used the restroom and I went back up to um, the front of the the audience and I was sitting there listening to the minister and the guy that was speaking kept looking at me funny. I was like, what is he looking at me for? (laughs) It looked like he was about to laugh the whole time. And then I turned to Aaron Smith, a good friend of mine who was sitting next to me and he's looking at me and he's about to crack up laughing. And then I realized that everybody in the room was looking at me. What are you going on here? so I looked down, and that plastic hook with the soap on it was hanging off the side of my pants. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> so uh, if you don't think that the Lord will use international travel to humble you, that's you're, the thing that you're hangs wrong. in the toilet. Yeah, it got the on thing you. That's that so in the gross. <laughs> Look, I've had a little toilet paper stick to my boots before, or something like that, but that was bad, you know. It was yeah. really, really embarrassing. Yeah. So that story is one of the little less serious things that have happened to us on our travels, but uh, you kind of go through it all as you uh, go through the nations and, and follow the Lord. So. Well, and one thing I want to say, because I remember even thinking this, like before we started going, you always, you, like there's this, people have this image of travel that it's glamorous, and it's really not. It's a lot of work. And you're going to go through some things in some nations and some airports that you would never, ever, ever expect. I remember one time we were just trying to come back here with our kids to America. And we were flying, um, I mean, we were coming from Israel to visit America for the first time in two years. Because we had gone two years without coming back to America because we had had Charles, our third child. And um, I remember in the airport in London, they tried to separate us from Lily, because I wouldn't let Lily go through the big round um, uh, detector, because they say kids aren't supposed to go through that. And here in America, they actually don't make them go through that. And um, so they were wanting to search her in a separate room without me. And I just had to say, hey, where I am going is not important enough for you to separate me from my child. (laughs) I said, I'll go right back to where I came from. (laughs) But yeah, you go through some things that are really, really hard. I mean, so, you know, you're experiencing the journey, you're experiencing the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there are some ugly times when you're traveling that are really stressful. Yeah, there's some real logistical challenges that go into traveling with a family with young kids. And, you know, a lot of the families that we knew in Israel are familiar with that. Yeah. You know, getting through airports with all of their children. But um, when you have a stroller and you have small kids that can't keep up and you have to carry them and all of the uh, different diapers and equipment and stuff that goes mm-hmm. with them. And, then getting stopped in security and searched because of their bottle of milk or, you know, different things. Uh, there's just all kinds of things that have to be navigated. And one of the things that that did in Amber and I's life is uh, cause us to just have to take a moment and relax and see how we were going to get through those situations. Yeah. And uh, having both the faith and the confidence to do that uh, with the whole family is is uh, something that the Lord has to plan inside of you for sure. Yeah. Uh, really one of the most profound trips that I remember us going on and uh, one of the ones where we saw the most spiritual warfare in really got a picture of what that looks like was in India. And uh, it was 
one of the greatest experiences of my life. It really was on a lot of levels, but uh, it was similar to Nigeria in a lot of ways in the travel and some of the challenges that uh, we came up against. But um, we went to a little town far up in the northeast part of India, and uh, the heaviness there, the spiritual heaviness, was just something that was uh, tangible, and it was uh, really interesting. Uh, the little hotel that we stayed at had a, a statue of a, a demon god that's involved with Hindu there. That, and every day the staff would come and pray to this God and light incense and, and different things. And you could really just feel the spiritual oppression. And you could see it in the population, in the people there, and how many ailments and diseases and uh, different things were, were suffered from. And Amber and I actually ended up saving that hotel while we were there because uh, one night we got home from one of the meetings. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yes. And the Lord just prompted us to go up to our room early and leave the rest of the group that we were with and, and go to bed early. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, the air conditioner that was sitting right next to the drapes in our bedroom and started to spark and it caught the the drapes on fire and uh, jumped up and ripped the the cord out of the wall with uh, amber screaming at the top of her lungs no touch it don't touch it <laughs> yeah no i was i was so mad at him even for taking that chance but um because i mean it was on fire the whole hotel would have burned down and it, it was going to burn fast but he he ripped the the cord out of the wall and was if he hadn't have done that we wouldn't have passports I mean having your life is more important you know but like we wouldn't have our passports or anything it all would have burnt up but he saved the entire hotel for sure and um, that's another one of those things to just watch how the Lord opens those opportunities for you to talk to people because uh, when we talked to the guy that owned the hotel after that he came and really profusely thanked us for mm. for putting the fire out and uh, we told him look the, the spirit of the Lord just told us to walk up there right at that moment and that's how we found that fire and ended up putting it out and well, uh, we went to India a few times it was I think it was always with Trevor and Sharon Baker right that's right and um, but uh, the it was really, and they had this revival. Well, they called it a festival, but there were tens of thousands of people that would come, and they would just like drive through the area with a bullhorn and announce that there was a, a like a, a festival going to happen, and it was it, it was really a revival, and. Um, that was we saw some amazing things there really amazing just watching how the lord opened the door and put that whole thing together is a picture of how he works in nations because there was a group of uh, pastors there in india who had collaborated with some of the politicians in the area and gotten permission to have this festival which is uh, normally not allowed because it's strictly hindu in uh, that part of india and um it was just watching how the lord brought it together the manpower there were people that just came in from the village and built a stage out of bamboo mm -hmm. in a few days a huge stage with big enough to hold 50 people on it and uh, the message that came out from some of the pastors and from Trevor and uh, when the Lord had us speak uh, was just profound it was just such uh, such an experience of the truth that the Lord has at its most basic level one of the most tangible things that we saw was um, Trevor had us pray over a lady who had a giant growth on her neck like a cancer growth it was like a ball sticking out from her neck like that big and um we just watched it dissolve i mean it was several inches off of her neck and her neck went completely back to normal and it totally dissolved. They had an altar call where uh, anybody who was sick or had physical ailments or anything to come forward and get prayed for and I, I don't know how many hundreds of people we prayed for. I mean there were Thousands. lines just all the way across this field and the only way that they had advertised that meeting like Amber said was with the bullhorn and there were over 8,000 people at the meeting that came from the whole surrounding area and uh, we watched at least 3,000 of them get saved. They came forward and gave their life to the Lord. Daniel and I normally several people healed how many people did we see personally get healed just I mean thousands thousands but you know we normally do everything together and they because there were so many people they split us up to pray for, to go down and pray for people I remember like getting turned around kind of like because there were so many people I didn't I remember like kind of not knowing where I was a little bit I was just a little disoriented because it was so many people and um, I found a path it was it was just so God I found a pastor and he could tell I needed help and I said, are you a local pastor? And he said, yes. And then he helped me continue to pray for people. Cause there was also like manifestations happening too, like demonic manifestations. And that's one reason that Jesus sends people out two by two. <laughs> <laughs>
And I always bring back up. I always bring back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, also while we were in India on one of those trips, uh, we got to visit another country that's near India. And, mm. and uh, the Lord really supernaturally provided for us to meet with the underground church there. We can't uh, tell you the name of it. Similar to the other yeah. uh, story that we told you about the islands. But um, one of the politicians that was working in the area was from this other country and um, had a good rapport with them. And he put us in the trunk of his car and drove across the border and uh, told the border guard to that we were with him so uh we got to go in and, and meet with a family there that was uh, believers and it was on the was border really, of india really unbelievable yeah and we just we just went this one lady just wanted us to go pray in her house and so we went there just to do that but it was such an amazing experience and it was amazing how different the two countries were how different this other country was from india the, the other country that we're talking about that we got into is also um extremely unreached and I think it's starting to open up to tourism now, but back then, I think they said that they only gave out like 20 visas a year for people to get into the country. It's 100% communist, and but it was it was gorgeous, but you could tell it was gorgeous at a pr price, like, like, you know, if you throw something on the street, I don't know if you're gonna survive <laughs> that day. <laughs> it's not funny, yeah, but, that was but a, yeah. A really tense situation, but uh, it was such a blessing to be able to go in and meet with believers there and yeah. uh, hear what the Lord was doing. And uh, it really brings the word alive. Like when you see uh, different places in Isaiah where it talks about salvation reaching to the ends of the earth and to reaching even to the islands. Mm -hmm. And um, in our travels and in our walk, the Lord's allowed us to even see that personally like that. And that's, that's what's really incredible. Yeah. It's what keeps the fire going inside of us. And, yeah. um, so I want to talk a little bit about the Lord's heart in nations so that we understand that uh, as we're going through this. And it's not all just about stories, but the Lord has to bring you to a point where you really understand his plan in the earth and what the purpose of visiting other nations is. And uh, then you come into a place of revelation where he begins to show you what you're supposed to speak into those nations uh, when you go. Uh, we were in Ethiopia shortly before we came back. Um, this is a uh, something that's so near and dear to Amber and I's heart because uh, since COVID's happened, we haven't been able to physically travel to the nations you know as much as mm -hmm. we had for some years before that. But um, for us, that that burning fire is still there. That understanding of what the Lord wants and what He's trying to do in nations is still there. And so, as much as anything, the show is a call. Um, it's a call to intercession for the nations. It's a call to go to the nations, uh, both physically but in the spirit as well. Mm -hmm. We really got to see an example of that when we traveled to Ethiopia. Uh, we went with Dad, and there were several mm -hmm. uh, ministries that had asked Dad to speak, and one of them ended up asking Amber and I to speak also while we were there. But uh, just seeing the work that the Lord was doing in the people there, um, we went to some of the meetings that Dad had spoken at, and uh, he also met, I think, with some of the politicians while we were there. On the last day that we were in Ethiopia, Amber and I had been invited to speak, and a pastor there is really a special guy. Uh, he's prayed over several people and seen them raised from the dead mm -hmm. and that's uh, what his ministry is known for and uh, when we got there to speak there was 2,000 people I think it was in the main auditorium and then there was a breakout room that wrapped all the way around the main auditorium that was another three two or three thousand people, people lined there. up in the hallways and there were people lined up outside the building uh, to get in and the people that were in the main auditorium were the believers who normally attend that church and the people that were in all of these breakout rooms around the outside were Muslims who had walked in off of the street that just wanted yeah. to hear what was going on and be part of the meeting and just seeing how the Lord draws all of these people together to hear the truth and to move them into the truth regardless of where they're from or what their beliefs are uh, is something that's just really touched Amber and I and the message that he had us carry that day was about one new man and about salvation and understanding the nations from that perspective. So. We were talking about Israel, we were talking about covenant and we did not know that until we left we had to rush out to get to the airport but we didn't know that there were probably 20 percent of the people that were there were Muslims and I, it's good that we didn't know that in advance because I don't know if we would have gotten intimidated maybe or if we wouldn't have sure sometimes it's better if you just tell the truth yeah, and don't worry about the who truth, the audience is and God <laughs> sometimes keeps you from knowing things you don't need to know till later God uh, had Paul do that once or twice didn't he uh, yeah so. so as I've experienced the call that the Lord had in my life to the nations I really look at that as uh, an extension of my father's call in building on mm -hmm. the foundation that uh, the Lord laid with him and the nations and uh, 
uh, throughout his life and ministry. And it's always something that's uh, been really exciting to me to be able to step into that and to see everything the Lord would do. And I don't think it's by any accident that the Lord took us to Israel to begin our understanding of that because of what the Word of God says about the nations and them being the inheritance. I remember I would have a dream that we were going to go to a nation and then like normally I'd have that dream within two or three months we'd get an invitation to a, to a nation. The Lord just had us walk in that way for so long. I mean, yeah. there were several years where that's exactly how that worked. Um, the Lord would just give Amber a vision or give us a vision for a specific nation. And then within a month or two, we would get a call from that nation or from somebody who wanted us to, to travel there. So. Your dad was called to the, for the healing of the nations. And so he's been a prophet to the nations. And um, I remember when, when we were in Nigeria, Emmanuel Kore, we talked about this in part one, um, Emmanuel Kore, he had me stand up and he prophesied to me and he told me that I was called to the healing of the rivers of the nations. And I, he had no idea that I'd been having dream after dream after dream about rivers and things that were occurring in rivers and symbolism in rivers. And um, so that was, I knew that he, I mean, he's such a strong prophet. I knew that he was hearing God because he didn't know I was having all those dreams. And after that, I think we shared it and people started asking me to come to pray at the headwaters of different rivers. And so we would do that. I mean, we would do it by I faith. I remember that. I didn't fully understand what I was doing, but sometimes you do it by faith. That reminds me of, um, you know, when you do something by faith, it reminds me of when we were in Jerusalem and we had that first meeting. Some people had actually asked us to host and help put together um, a meeting in Jerusalem and we had never done it before. And I think we were pretty intimidated and I think everybody was. And um, um, at the end of the meeting, we had just come back from America actually. And so, you know, we've still got the kids, we've got jet lag and I was really tired. And I just wanted to, to go, I just wanted Daniel to finish the meeting and I wanted to go home. And um, so, I told him, I was like, hey, uh, you know, in Jerusalem, we just take taxis around so I can, I could just be like, hey, I'm going to get a cab and I'll see you back at home. And um, so he was like, no. And then all of a sudden they announced Daniel Pierce is going to pray for everybody in the room. And so Daniel said, you can't leave. You have to help me. And I was like, God, I don't feel a thing. How could I pray for people? All hands on deck. Yeah. And he said, just say this. Just say joy in the war. And I was like, that is such a weird phrase. And so I started to pray for people and just like touch their heads and say that. And then all of a sudden I got like, like the Holy Spirit touched me and people started to fall down as I would just barely touch their heads. And then I began to walk down the aisle of people and they began to fall down just as I walked. And it was just, I mean, that's like when you're moving by faith and you don't understand what you're doing, that's because God steps in because I said yes to you. I said yes to God. And so he anointed what he wanted to do. And the most amazing thing about that was how long was it after that that we went into the longest war Israel's ever been in? It was a 30-day war. It was just right after that. It was that right after that meeting. And he had those words, joy in the war. That's also the name of our book. That's why our book is named that. It wasn't because we know all about having joy in the midst of war. It's because God, like that's, God is so much bigger than our understanding. His ways are so much higher than our ways. And that's why that book is called that. It's not because we're experts on having joy in war. <laughs> we did learn some things about maintaining your joy. Mm. But what we've learned is that so often it really is just a matter of taking that first step. Like you yeah. just said, mm -hmm. you know, there was a situation that uh, you didn't even feel like it physically. You weren't motivated, but yeah. the Lord said, take that step. And you did. And you step right into that river. Yeah. You know, exactly what they prophesied over you. Uh, when you jump in that river of the Holy Spirit and you let that carry you, you know, the word says that the Holy Spirit is like a wind. We know not from where it comes or where it's going, but we perceive it when it's here. And when we do that and we walk that way, that's what carries us. That's that's how you carry a call in the nations. Yeah. Uh, the Lord brought us to several things that we really had to understand to go into the nations through living in Israel. Uh, I want to share with you Acts 17:26 because uh, this is something that's really spoken to me in my life. It says that uh, from one new man, God created the nations and he set their boundaries according to the number of the sons of Israel. And um, I feel like really to understand what the Lord's doing and where he's going in the nations, we have to first look at Israel and realize that he set an order in 
in the nations. And you know, I'm not sure this is something you fully could have explained to me before I moved to Israel and I experienced this and began to watch how the Lord realigned things. Uh, going back to Ethiopia, when we traveled to Ethiopia, one of the most profan- profound things that happened in that trip was um, uh, shortly after we left, Ethiopia came out, their government made a statement mm-hmm. that they were realigning with Israel. And that happened just, if you can't see how the Spirit of the Lord works to realign nations to His covenant and realign nations in His kingdom, uh, then that's what those, that experience is. You mm-hmm. have to see that. So another verse that I wanted to share with you and talk about a little bit is in Psalms chapter 2. And Dad actually just reminded me about this this morning when I was talking to him about the nations. And it says, I will make the nations your inheritance. And in that verse, uh, the Lord's speaking through David. And if you think about the context of that, that David was a warrior. He spent his whole life in, in warfare. There's something that we're supposed to war for in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, and as we internalize that verse and we let that become a part of us, we have to realize that if you're called to the nations, you're called to war for the nations. And mm-hmm. the war that we're in is to see every nation realign uh, with the gifts and uh, the destiny that the Lord has for them in the place that they have in his kingdom. You know, and it's interesting, too, that for two years, people were not able to go to the nations anymore. I mean, we, you know, we had to get online and we had to Skype and had to get creative about communicating and staying in touch with you know, people, leaders and people from different nations. Um, But now people are starting to go again just recently. And I don't know where we fit into that. We're actually going on a trip, not a ministry trip. We're going on a a vacation together, Um, an eight-hour long flight. That's the first time we've gone on a flight that long. It'll really be the first time we've left the mainland the United States in a couple of years. Yeah, for sure. I see that the Lord's really reigniting travel, though. It's something he's reigniting the physical call to the nations. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about it and asking the Lord why we've seen this pause mm-hmm. in travel for the last couple of years. And us personally, as well as you know others that we know, some people continue traveling and they were supposed to. But um, I don't believe that this pause has occurred in the earth um, so that there can be a, a one world order come about that's um, you know not of the Lord and not the Lord's plan in the earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why has he having, has he had us take a step back and begin to intercede before launching us back out into the earth? So as I've pondered that and uh, taken that to the Lord, I really truly believe that the reason why it, He's had us take a step back is because he's going to reignite a fire for the nations and Mm -hmm. a heart for the nations uh, that's not just going to speak prophetically into nations, but going to carry with it an era of of revival, an era of revival fire. And and until we're ignited with that, until we're full of his spirit to carry that back to the nations, uh, he's had us stay in the place of intercession, but there will be a time of action and that time of action is coming. And that's the place that we have to get to in our understanding of one new man there's one flock and there's one shepherd and God took one man and created all nations and set forth their boundaries. So as the Lord begins to work in realigning the nations, the revival fire that brings us together is what we're looking for. That's what we're pleading with the Lord for. It's what we're interceding for. And when we begin to speak out of that, we see the fulfillment of the prophecies that the Lord has for us and the vision that he's had for us in the nations. What you're sharing is just kind of blowing me away because we haven't at home, we haven't talked that much about this, really. We've, you know, we, we're looking at the news. We're trying to see above the news. We're trying to see above, like, you know, soaring gas prices and what travel will cost and all these things. We have to look beyond that and just keep our eyes focused on what God's saying and not what all the conditions in the world are um, and what the limitations could actually be because we have faith that God, you know, he, he has our, our times and our seasons he holds the keys to them. Um, so what you said was really anointed, and I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, I was just, as you, was, as you were talking, I thought about how the Lord had brought us to Kenya. That was another great trip. Yeah. How did we end up going to Kenya? Uh, a couple of pastors from, I think it was Seattle, here in the United States, had yeah, invited us to meet connected. them there, and they're connected with some of the pastors Supenio, in Kenya. Apostle Supenio, and... Um, yeah, that was an amazing trip. When you go to Africa, you find out that when you ask somebody um, how far away something is, the answer is always one hour, but that's not really true. That could be five or six hours. They just always say that everything is one hour away. But <laughs> So we went to 
Kenya, and um, we had an awesome time ministering there in a tent revival. There was a, a giant tent, you know, like old school, and mud everywhere. And we we, were, we went prepared for that. We were wearing hiking boots and um, and like North Face clothes, and we were we covered in covered in mud. But it was such a great time ministering there. And the people were just had so much faith, and they were so hungry for God. But um, I do remember like how wild it was. There'd be, like on one side of the road, there was actually a bunch of cattle when we're trying to get there in the road. So it caused this huge traffic jam. The they cattle like to camp out right in the middle of the street, don't they? Yeah, they. Yeah, it took forever to get there. We were nervous about being late, and um, I think we ended up needing to because something happened with a storm, we actually had to improvise and we found a way to spend the night there because we were supposed to drive back to our hotel, which was only supposed to be an hour away, but it wasn't, it was several hours. It was four hours away. Yeah, so we spent the night. We changed plans. That was another thing we learned as we were traveling. You have to be able to change plans quickly and that's something else the Lord's really ministered to us out of lately and Amber and I have talked about that Mm -hmm. is that part of moving with the Spirit means a willingness to be able to change in a moment's notice and if we get so stuck on our own plans, then we don't let the Lord move us where we need to be to accomplish what we need to be doing. Yeah. And so after um, that ministry time, we actually took a few days to do one of the most amazing things we've ever done. We got to go on a safari in the, um, not not Nairobi. Where were we? It was. We left out of Nairobi and we got on a small bush plane and flew to the southern part of Kenya to the Maasai Mara. Yeah, park. Maasai Mara. It was, that was such an amazing i think we got like three days to do that that was that was one of the scarier plane trips we've ever been on yeah uh, we love the two pilots it was a couple of young ladies that were flying the plane they just did an excellent job but uh coming in for landing the plane was just like this back and forth and it was a mm-hmm. dirt landing strip with a bunch of potholes and animals walking back and forth across zebra, it. like there were zebras so, uh, and giraffes on the not, one of the more nerve-wracking flights yeah. we've been on but there was uh, zebras, such an incredible experience there were ze- zebras and giraffes actually on the landing strip and they just move whenever the plane comes in. When we got to the park, they told us not to walk outside at night and try and uh, go to the bathroom or go down to the store or anything because the lines and stuff will come up sometimes at night and walk right up and down the sidewalks and uh, be close to camp. So Yeah. So uh, that was the November before COVID happened. And then it. we got to do a few more things. And the last trip we ever went on right before COVID was we went to Wales. That was right before the whole entire world changed. What do you think God was saying about that? Because I know you always felt like the last place that we went before the world shut down, and this is kind of what you were sharing earlier, was a place that is known for revival. We visited all the revival sites. We were with Roy and Vanessa Hackett. That's right. And they took the time to take us all over the place. We ministered in their church along with Marty Cassidy, who has a d- different last name now because she's married. But um, yeah, we got to ha- do some. We love you, Marty. If you're listening <laughs> to this, we uh, enjoyed that trip with you too. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I found it really significant that the last place that the Lord took us to before COVID happened and the whole world shut down uh, is a place that really represents revival to all of us. And if you look at history uh, and how revival has worked in history, there are times that the Lord's pre-appointed for revival. And I really believe that we're coming up on one of those times uh, soon and that that's what that was a picture of. I think the Lord took us back to that last place of revival to show us that, to show us what that looked like uh, so that we would gain an understanding of it and begin to intercede for that even as we take this break here you know in america from international travel and uh work through everything that COVID has has done with the world but uh we're supposed to be in but not of the world and Mm -hmm. that's the place that we have to stay in an intercession and as we speak into nations even from a distance uh, we have to keep that mindset and understand like amber said earlier that everything we see on the news is not our reality it's not all there is to our reality and not Mm -hmm. all there is to god's reality so um when we went to wales that was so incredible they took us to Blinanek, which mm-hmm. is a little chapel where the Welsh revival started. Yeah. And uh, the revival really swept the world. And um, 
that was where was it Evans had his powerful experience with mm-hmm. the Lord and uh, for several days just stayed in the Spirit of God and it spread out from there you know all over the earth we also went to the the Bible school there uh, which was a big part of the revival and Amber and I were just so impacted because you could see the difference in the way uh, man works and the way the Spirit of God works and when you see a place and you hear a story where you know the Spirit of God was in control there was no man that caused that there was no man that sat on and decided we're going to start a revival. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was purely a work of the Spirit of God, and that's what we're waiting for, and that's what we know is coming. Yeah. So we want to take a few minutes and just uh, really pray over this and pray that it sinks into us as a body and individually uh, call to the nations and that the Lord will begin to show us how to intercede for, intercede for the nations even as they begin to open back up. So. Amber, will you join me? Yes. Lord, we just thank you for the call to the nations. Uh, We thank you for what a special part of our life that we've gotten to experience with that, Lord, and how you've placed that on our hearts and how you've taught us about your call to the nations and your order in the nations. Uh, We thank you first for Israel, Lord, and the period of time that we got to spend there and uh, just coming alive in your spirit, Lord. And we just thank you for the work that you're doing in every nation, every Gentile nation, Father. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you that there are other sheep that are going to come into your sheep pin across the world, Lord, and we just pray that your work would be stored, stirred up and that your revival would be stirred up. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just want to say thank you to everybody who has joined us for these two um, shows about our travels, our experiences, our adventures. Um, we hope that you're encouraged. We hope that it ignites a fire in you to begin to pray for the nations again in a renewed way. Um, And we just love you all and thank you for joining us. Bless you.